I've been thinking uh, a great deal about my Advent message uh, this year. The, the Twitterverse and internet is seemingly filled with a conversation about the need for repentance this Advent as a way to prepare for the Feast of the Incarnation in Christmas time. And uh, that may be so, and uh, that may be indeed what we need. However, I have really been moved by the Advent readings, and especially those uh, from Isaiah this year. Specifically, I'm thinking of God's invitation to comfort uh, the people from Isaiah 40, beginning in that first verse. Oh, comfort, comfort, my people, says our God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Advent has several themes, but as a pastor among pastors, shepherd among shepherds, this passage speaks to me deeply this year. Uh, if, I, if I question it, God continues with these words, cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Here God asks Isaiah to see the people in their pain and suffering, to see how they suffer now and how long their suffering has cost them dearly. Um, the prophet continues in the wilderness then, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the desert a highway uh, for our God. I was inspired uh, when thinking about that highway by a short passage uh, a passage by the Reverend Todd Weir uh, found on his uh, blog, Blooming Cactus, uh, entitled Straight Highways. He reminds us that highway, that the highway Isaiah may be referring to is one that began in Heliopolis, Egypt, and uh, went east to the land of Moab and then north to the Euphrates. The highway Isaiah is remembering may be the highway that literally put Israel on the map and speaks to the people, his audience. It would have uh, heard this prophecy, but when they began to imagine this, uh, they would have remembered a time of greatness in the past. Moreover, the prophet would be intimating of a future return home and again a return. Such an image would have brought comfort, I imagine. It would have reminded the people of a return home, a return to a renewed age of stability. In the Gospel of Mark, we find that the Isaiah passage is uh, used as a passage of hope. Mark's message to the people listening to that gospel is that they have long been suffering and that Christ comes to them bearing a new gospel of hope for a hurting people. Luke reminds us in a similar way that this good news, this comfort that Isaiah is prophesying is actually meant for all people. Isaiah's prophecy was meant for a whole nation, but this and the revelation of Christ, Luke suggests, is a comfort meant for all people, a comfort for all people, for you uh, and for me. This Advent, I'm thinking that after months of COVID and a continuing crisis of managing the disease, after months and even years of party politics and a struggling economy, we have need to lift our eyes together to see uh, the people before us. Uh, God, may this Advent be inviting us to comfort each other. Perhaps we are to comfort those doctors and nurses who continue to fight this disease, comfort those who get it and struggle to live, comfort the hundreds of thousands of families who have lost loved ones to COVID, comfort each other who have loved ones but see no longer with a resurrection hope. Maybe we're to see the families and friendships ripped asunder by political fights, those wounded by hate speech and those who feel the pain of being forgotten by a system that's supposed to care for them. Uh, for uh, the victims and uh, the murders of racial violence. Uh, we're called to comfort. We're called to comfort our brothers and sisters of color as they continue to fight for recognition in a system that is blind to the integration of structural racism. Possibly Advent is for us to understand the economy is made up of people, that in our state 20% of the people around us feel hunger on a regular basis that the joblessness itself is a, is a pandemic of epic proportions 
that there is a fair amount of hopelessness and fear in our communities, that our suicide rate in Texas has been rising all year, might we comfort with the wisdom that there is nothing that separates us from God's love. And no matter where we are, there are uh, Episcopal churches with people there to listen, to help, to take your hand, to offer a bread, uh, to help guide us through this. Perhaps the message of Advent needs to be one of comfort, invited to comfort each other, not only with words, uh, but actions. God invites us to an active pastoral response of comfort, a comfort that reminds us that this crisis and trauma uh, uh, is not the axis upon which our world revolves, applying some of Friedman's thought here. This is a comfort that continues to develop the church community as a support system for our people, but also for those around us. The comfort we are to preach is one that reminds us of the highway that is yet before us, the continuation of a mission through evangelism and service that we have not given up on. We're to pray with each other and walk with each other at this time of Advent. Our comfort is one of joy and of love. Comfort also includes holding the answer for the trouble before you lightly. We're to comfort each other as we try new things, comfort each other when they don't always work out. We're to do something about the hungry, uh, those who hunger. We're to do something uh, 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 to heal the division. We're to do something uh, to uh, be the balm of Gilead for the pain that people feel and their suffering. We've experienced our own Babylonian captivity since March or longer in some cases of the suffering that we face today. We've yet before us a good amount of wilderness journey indeed with rising cases. We know that good news about the vaccine is always tempered by the long months between now and the time that we can receive it. So uh, I reach out to you this Advent and I invite you, I invite you to engage in comforting each other. Hear the words of God to Isaiah, comfort, comfort my people. See where we have come and embody comfort for the people in your lives, the ones that you come into contact with, whether they be at the store uh, or in a shop or a uh, restaurant, if you will, a uh, uh, church or on a Zoom meeting. Be a comforting presence for your family and for your friends, for your neighbors. Offer a comforting word. Take on comforting action this Advent. Comfort them in COVID tide, in the political arena of family and friends, and as people stronger, struggle with, with hunger and joblessness and uh, hopelessness. There is a highway that even now is being brought near and stumbling blocks that are even now being brought low. There is hope. There is hope in the COVID politics and even our struggles economically in uh, uh, this time will not have the last word of meaning uh, on our lives. Uh, the church is here. You are here. Uh, I am here. We are here. The people, the people, Episcopalians in Texas are here and we are here to receive and to share for each other a comforting, comforting word. A blessed Advent to you.